Hello. In this topic, you're going to look at extraction of uh, metals. And to start, metals is a, uh, the rationale of studying metals cannot be emphasized since ages. The world over metals like gold and silver have been used for commercial purposes. The periodicity of alkali and alkaline earth metals was studied in uh, years two of the secondary school education. Uh, this topic generally deals with the uh, natural occurrence of the chief ores of the most useful metals for industrial and commercial purposes, extraction of these metals from their ores for industrial and uh, commercial use, industrial commercial uses of these metals, and uh, number four, mainly physical and chemical properties uh, of uh, the metals. We will not look at all the metals because there are so, so many, so we'll only put emphasis to sodium, aluminium, iron, zinc, lead, and copper. For a metal to be extracted, we are going to depend on two major things. So one, it is uh, its reactivity series, uh, and number two, its occurrence on the earth crust. So we are going to look at this table uh, to show us how we are going to extract different metals. For example, uh, when you look at this chart, we are starting from here, position on the earth crust. Then when you look at the position, we can have uh, if the metal is uh, if the metal ore is near the surface, uh, then we are going to employ the use of open cast mining or quarrying is used. And if the metal ore is deep on the earth crust, then deep mining is used. If the ore is low grade, then oil, water, and air is blown, forming a froth flotation. Uh, and this is basically just to concentrate the amount of ore. And that's why you're talking of if the ore is of low grade, meaning that we are getting something very small from the ore. Then uh, electrolysis will be used if the ore is of a metal of a very reactive metal, like for example, uh, potassium, sodium, magnesium, calcium, or aluminium. But since we've said that in this chapter, we are only going to look at sodium and aluminium as part of the metal we're going to study. So sodium and aluminium are extracted by the use of uh, electrolysis because they are of very reactive, uh, they are very reactive metals. Then uh, if the ore is of a less reactive metal, like for example, zinc, lead, and copper, then, then we use a reduction and uh, we are going to use a reducing agent like carbon or carbon-2 oxide. Because remember that carbon and carbon-2 oxide, they have the ability to remove oxygen from uh, compounds containing oxygen. Let us now look at sodium. So for you to know how a metal is extracted, then it is, it is very important first to know how it occurs in nature. And uh, we are saying that sodium naturally occurs as a brine, and brine is a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. It also can occur as a rock salt, and rock salt is just solid sodium chloride. Or uh, sodium is also found in uh, trona, and uh, we are saying that trona is especially found in uh, Lake Magadi, which is a uh, sodium carbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate, and some two molecules of uh, water. Or it, it is also found in Chile as sodium nitrate. In our extraction of sodium, we are going to use uh, the rock salt, which is a uh, solid sodium chloride. Mm. So that one is going to be our chief raw material and kindly whenever you are looking at the extraction of metals you must know the chief o so the chief o of sodium uh the chief o that is used in the extraction of sodium is a uh, rock salt and uh, our raw material that we're going to use are uh, the rock salt and uh, calcium chloride so we are uh, uh, below is the outline of uh, the chemical processes you can look at it as uh, the cursor goes down
sodium is ext extracted by the use of the Downs cell and uh, in the Downs cell what happens is uh, rock salt is heated to molten state in a chamber lined with the fire bricks on the outside. <clears throat> High melting point of about 800 degrees Celsius. Calcium chloride is added to lower the melting point of the electrolyte to about 600 degrees Celsius. Remember that the temperatures of 800 degrees Celsius is very expensive to maintain this. So we are using sodium chlor uh, we are using calcium chloride to lower that melting point so that we can cut on the cost of uh, production. The molten electrolyte is then electrolyzed in a carbon graphite anode suspended at the center and surrounded by steel cathode. The equation for the decomposition of the electrolyte is that sodium chloride decomposes into sodium ions and chloride ions. Remember, in the absence of water, the ions are in liquid state. That's why you are seeing that we have sodium ions as a liquid and chloride ions as also liquid. Sodium ions being positively charged will, will be attracted at the steel cathode uh, where the cathode is a negatively charged electrode. So the material used in making the negatively charged electrode is uh, steel. And uh, chloride ions will be attracted to the positively charged electrode, the anode, and what we are using to make our anode is the carbon or just graphite. The respective half cell equations that are taking place is uh, sodium ions will gain electrons to form uh, sodium in liquid state. And uh, chloride ions use the electrons to form chlorine gas. And this, remember, is taking place at the anode, which is uh, carbon graphite. The products formed at respective cell, uh, uh, respective uh, electrodes, uh, we are saying is a gray solid sodium metal, which is less dense than the molten electrolyte and therefore floats on top of the cathode uh, to be periodically tapped off. And please, uh, here you need to remember we are looking at the observations made. So we have the gray solid uh, sodium metal. And at the anode, we have the pale green chlorine gas that turns moist blue litmus paper red. Then bleaches, of course, that is the properties of chlorine gas. <clears throat> this is the shape, or this is the, this is how a down cell looks like. So we have the negative, the electrode, this one, this side, and also this other side, and I think that these are made of steel. Then we have our anode, which is made of carbon. So, and we are saying that it's being suspended in the middle. And uh, this is where molten sodium chloride with little calcium, uh, with little calcium chloride is put inside the down cell chamber and uh, molten sodium lives through here because we are saying that it lives through here because it is light hence it's able to float then chlorine lives through this middle chamber as the pale yellow gas some uses of sodium metal and we are saying that sodium vapor is used as, as sodium lamps to give a yellow light in the street lighting this is so common on most of our roads then also sodium is used in making very useful sodium compounds environmental effects of down cell we are seeing that the chlorine pr produced at the anode has a pungent irritating smell that causes headache to human beings and also bleaches any wet substance dissolves water to form both hydrochloric acid and chloric one acid that causes marine pollution and stomach upsets. Then you can also look for the test of uh, presence of sodium ions in a compound. So that is what you do. Then we have the following practice questions that you can look at them 
and work them out as we have not done the chapter of uh, electrochemistry but not down the following questions uh, then we can use them uh, later Thank you. Kindly ensure that you write down all the notes and uh, I try to attempt the following question that I've just given as an example. And then uh, we'll add more questions uh, back in class.